Ancient Egyptian history spanned thousands and thousands of years, and when we think about that culture today, a few important images pop to mind. The Great Pyramids, the Sphinx, and of course, the golden face of young pharaoh Tutankhamun. King Tut. When his tomb was fully excavated in the 1920s, Egyptology took the world by storm. Today we're going to look at some of the history surrounding King Tut's tomb and, of course, the gemstones that were hidden away with him for thousands of years. Starting around the 19th century, European archaeologists became obsessed with ancient Egyptian culture and were on the hunt for treasure-filled tombs. But they weren't the first people with this idea. Many of the tombs had been ransacked by grave-robbing thieves over the course of a few thousand years. British archaeologist, Howard Carter was hired by Lord Carnarvon to search for a tomb they believe remained untouched, that of the relatively obscure Tutankhamun, who died when he was just a teenager. Carter searched for years with no luck and the expedition was nearly called off, but Lord Carnarvon had money. Are you guys familiar with the Highclere Castle where they filmed the show Downton Abbey? Well, Lord Carnarvon was born there, so Carter was able to talk him into spending just a little bit more of that old money, and it paid off. After another year of hunting in Egypt, they found long lost steps hidden underneath debris. There may have been looting at some point, but the innermost chamber of King Tut's tomb, entered on February 16th of 1923, appeared to be completely untouched for over 3,000 years. All told, there were about 5,000 different artifacts found in the tomb. The most important was a stone sarcophagus with three different coffins resting inside, like a Russian nesting doll, only Egyptian. And instead of toys, there's a mummy inside of a king! But his tomb was nowhere near as grand as other pharaohs, and though we can only speculate, it seems Tutankhamun's court was unprepared for his death. King Tut died young, around 1323 BC, when he was only about 18 years old. His parents were probably brother and sister, or maybe cousins. His neck vertebrae were fused together, and that means he couldn't turn his neck without moving his whole torso. He also had a club foot and may have needed to walk with a cane. DNA analysis shows that he likely suffered from malaria more than once. It's hard to visualize King Tut as a frail young man, because the only image we have of him is this handsome, shining face. This is made from solid gold, but there are gemstones here too. His eyes are made of quartz with obsidian pupils. Lapis lazuli lines his eyes and eyebrows. Stylish. Carnelian, feldspar, turquoise, and amazonite are also present, but this iconic coffin wasn't the only bit of treasure hidden away in the tomb. This pectoral representing the falcon form of the god Horus as he carries the sun across the sky includes lapis, turquoise, and carnelian inlay. The eyes are likely made of obsidian. Carter, who was a very studied Egyptologist, even recognized this figure from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Another interesting bird found in Tut's tomb is this vulture necklace found in the wrappings surrounding his mummy. He may have worn it when he was alive, and if he did, it looks like it would fit right in with the greatest chains in hip hop. This is the vulture goddess Nekbed, who was the patron saint of Upper Egypt. Unlike the purely symbolic design of the falcon pectoral, this vulture's head looks much more realistic. She has obsidian eyes, a lapis lazuli beak, and red, blue, and green glass feathers. This piece, which goes all out on the symbolism, features a green yellow scarab in the middle. At first, this yellow material was identified as chalcedony, which you guys know is a kind of quartz. But in fact, this is actually Libyan desert glass. It's a tectite, and is formed when a meteorite hits the ground, throws up hot molten sand, that cools in the air, and rains back down to earth as gemstones. There was no curse in King Tut's tomb, but there is a weapon that's out of this world. This iron dagger has meteorite origins, just like the scarab on the breastplate. Ancient pharaoh in charge of a kingdom, or teenage boy with a hella cool space knife. Why not both? Carter's discovery not only had a huge impact on archaeology, the finds in King Tut's tomb made their way to the world of high fashion. The opening of King Tut's tomb was one of the biggest news stories in the world, and jewelry designers like Cartier and Van Cleef and Arpels were inspired by the scarabs, gods, and ancient symbols. What curse would you put on grave robbers? Tell us about your vengeance from beyond the grave in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on obsidian, lapis, carnelian, and more, check out the links below. Thanks for watching.